How's it going everyone? Zonabra, your League of Legends coach, coming at you with another video. And if you're a new League of Legends player, this is a video for you. So, I recently picked up a Reddit post uh, posted by someone called Rome underscore Rome, who is a new League of Legends player and he doesn't understand uh, the logic to it. Like, why do we put certain champion in certain lanes? Uh, why is why is the game like this, right? And I totally forgot that there's still people who are just created your their account as as you're watching this video right now. Because I'm from the generation who discovered League of Legends as soon as it was released. World of Warcraft used to be huge back then, and when League of Legends came out, it really shifted everyone to this MOBA. Um, type of game that everyone loved instantly. You might say Dota did it before, blah, 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 but League of Legends was the very first game that was introduced that was very easy to use and fun and hard to master. And I feel like, plus the fact that it was free to play, etc. And I feel this is what really made League of Legends success. If you started today, you might realize that there's a top lane, there's a mid lane, there's a bot lane, and there's a jungle. But it's not like League of Legends, when it was created, right again, didn't tell us anything. They didn't tell us to, oh, you should put a tanky guy up top. You should put a guy who shoots bullets on the bottom with some guy to shield or heal him. And you should put some sort of mage in the middle and some kind of jungle, someone who can basically be alone for a couple times and can stun to participate into an action where you're basically a gank, okay? Uh, someone who would be in the jungle with the buffs, etc, etc. And when the game started, it was not like that. People were doing two mids, people were doing two junglers sometimes, people were just discovering the game until the first meta was organized. And this meta has persisted, adapted to a little bit of patches, but always stays the same. Generally, we have two people on the bot, one people in the jungle, one player in the mid lane, and the last one in the top lane. We can see a swap lanes with two people on the top lane and one people on the bottom lane, but generally 99% of the game in solo queue and in competitive league are the same. So why is that? So let's go for every world and see, a l for every lane and see what is it that make the game this way. So let's talk about the bot lane first. You want to know that you might want to know that ADCs such as Caitlyn, Vayne, Jinx, Jin, all those champions that are, that are tailored to do damage over time are very squishy in the laning phase. There are some few exceptions, but they necessarily need to make as much gold as they can so that when people gather in the mid lane or somewhere, you have as much item as you want. ADCs are like the power spikes from ADCs comes from items only. So you need as much gold as you can and therefore need to go to bot lane with a support to help you get as much farm as you can, get as much uh, gold as they can. They need this assistance to get the farm in a safe matter. The support, okay, those champions who are built not to do damage, they're not tailored to do damage, but to help initiate fights, to help the ADC with a shield or with heals, those champions are tailored to be with the, with the ADC or with someone in lane to help them out during this whole long laning phase uh, that is today's laning phase, which can be from 10 to 20 minutes sometimes. And in team fight, like those players are supposed to um, focus on division control more than others. There's, they have different roles, right? And the reason why we put them with the ADC is that the ADC doesn't necessarily need experience. He doesn't need to be alone in a lane where he's gonna get full experience from every single minion. He only needs as much gold as he needs as fast as he can. Therefore, support will help him sustain, will help him, be, will help him be aggressive or defensive during a laning phase, and therefore he's gonna be able to reach out the middle game with one or two items and the late game with four and five items, etc., etc., just by accumulating a certain number of minion farm. Now let's talk about the mid lane. Main lane are constantly filled with mages, assassins, people who really need the full experience from the minions. The reason why they go in the mid lane is that most of the time, those are players who have the ability to roll. They have CCs, they have stuff to speed them up, they can clear wave, and they are 
capable of going top or bot to make difference. Also, one of the reason why mid laners go to mid and used to go to mid when the game was created is that it was the shortest access to the blue buff. So if you needed to get blue buff, you need to come back to a lane and mid lane was the closest lane to that. And it stayed like that, some sort of tradition, and it's still today the stuff that is made by every single pro gamer. When you see a Faker, Hu Hai, um, Bjergsen, they all take mages and they go to the mid lane because they need to be as close at, for the Nexus as they can so that they can get full experience and they can farm and they can roam and they can get blue, etc. etc. They could act upon a Drake team fight. Really, the mid the mid game is like the core of the map. It's like the mid laner is the most charismatic player and he makes moves that usually have more impact in the game than other people, at least in the very first minutes. Uh, then you have the jungle. So if you create an account right now, people won't jungle because today the jungle is hard, you need those runes and level one, level two, level three till certain amount of levels you don't have those tools to help you roam what you're gonna see is that you're gonna go you're gonna see two people top two people bot and one people mid it's usually gonna be like this and when you have the runes when you get to this level when you have the runes and you're capable of doing the jungle on your own it's actually worth doing so because think about it those minion camps pop at a very early level of the game in the very first minute living them like this is just a waste of gold and a waste of experience therefore you need a champion that can actually do it so people are going to pick like stuff like elise neely whatever you can pick a grag ass all those stuff that can sustain and be able to farm fast the jungle they're going to use it so that they can start right away in the jungle get those buffs use the smite and clean the jungle. The smite is also used because you need the pressure from it when you want to secure a dragon or a baron, for example. So this is why we put someone in jungle because it would just be a waste of gold to not put someone in the jungle because those camps are alive and you want to kill them as soon as they come just because those are gold that are available to you. You can reach that. Rather, if you play two in the top lane, well, your top laner, he's gonna miss a lot of experience. You're gonna have to share that with your friend and the CS is going to be an argument and basically the opponent is just going to watch you guys under his turret just chilling, getting full experience and waiting for the jungle to come. Plus the jungle is a way for one player to get full experience as well and level up as fast, sometimes a little bit slower than a solo laner. Moving on to the top lane. Top lane is very debatable because it's one of the lane that changed the most, I guess. Uh, we used to see a lot of tanky uh, figures, then we saw a lot of assassin figures, then we saw a lot of mages with double AP and mid and top. We saw a lot of stuff every single year that is different in the top lane, and it's really what makes League of Legends so cool about it. So what you wanna do in the top lane as much as in the mid lane is that you want to get someone that needs full experience that doesn't want to need support automatically but needs to be alone in a lane in the top lane because it's very far from the bot lane from the dragon and from all those early objectives you want to put something that is going to be able to sustain a lane by itself but that is going to make more impact in team fight than in just basic laning phase it's important to know that all those top laners that built really tanky their, their items are kind of expensive and they need this time to build up uh, experience and gold and they're just like le le left alone in the island of the rift what people call the top lane these days but this changed again with the new mid-season changes when you have the rift herald who completely changed and the fact that the map is now symmetrical because you have both good objectives in one side than in another it makes a whole difference. So maybe the meta will shift and maybe what I'm saying in a month will be completely outdated. But what we're looking for at, at top lane is that we're gonna put someone with a teleportation and a flash usually. We're gonna tell him, okay, just farm, just get some experience, get tanky, have impact, TP when you have an opportunity because it's not like he's as close as the mid laner. So he kind of needs the TP and he is just gonna farm, farm, farm the top lane, maybe split push, but it's really about knowing that the top lane is not something with a lot of traffic in the first 20 minutes. So that's why they take TP, that's why they farm alone, and they're usually too tanky who are just gonna farm, farm, exchange waves of farm, and just make the difference while TPing in the bot lane or making difference while roaming in the mid lane, etc, etc, etc. Those are really ideas that's been created by players, right? It's not like Riot didn't tell us, okay, you guys need a guy like this and this. Pro players, all those season one pro gamers, 
created the meta that everybody is following right now. But it's not like a meta that doesn't make sense, right? It's a meta that absolutely makes sense. Like, mages needs more experience than, than early golds. All those ADC are squishy for a reason, because they do a lot of DPS, therefore they need support to farm and to be able to reach a mid game comfortably. So all of that makes a lot of sense, but I really understand that if you're a new player, it's kind of hard to understand why would this make any sense to you. If you need any help, feel free to email me. I will be happy to help you. If you need coaching, you know the link down below. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you for the next one. You gotta focus on what's real, man.